Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. With my body. With my body. I thee honor. I thee honor. With all my worldly goods. With all my worldly goods. With thee I share. With thee I share. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. There's another one just come over the pedal box. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, but what can the green pair do? <laughs> that was from Mel and Jesse Anderson out at Wombard. Now this one's from Cairns. Dear Jean, who's minding the flaming potties? <laughs> now one more and then it's going to get into the serious stuff of speeches and things. Now it's from the Murphys. Now, it's all not the Murphy, so you know what to expect. Dear Jean, make sure you wear the pants most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll settle down, settle down. Hey, come on, fair go. Look, it's early yet. Keep yourselves decent. <laughs> now, I'd like to call on a, a highly esteemed visitor all the way from... From, all, all the way from over there to propose a toast. Now, you all got something to gargle? Yeah. Fill them up. To propose a toast to the bride and groom, Mr. Noel Strong. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. Same here. <laughs> Cora Mari will be out on your bum. It gives me great pleasure to be here and to be asked to propose this toast. In point of fact, I haven't known Jean all that long. It just seems I've known her most of her life. And a remarkable life it's been, filled with hardship, deprivation and personal loss. Things that would have tested the strongest among us. Yet Jean has emerged not hardened by our experience or afraid, but as a warm, compassionate human being, ready to take on fresh challenges. She's a diamond. As in the past, she'll meet those challenges head on, and once again emerge with flying colors. You can bet your boots on that. <laughs> Why am I so sure? Because Jean now has a fine man at her side. To support her through the rest of life's journey. Let's hear it for Jan. Yes. You know, I first met Joe Harmon when he came to London in search of Jean. And I confess I wasn't as helpful as I might have been. However, I wasn't aware then, as I am now, of how suited this young couple were for each other. You're a lucky man, Joe Harmon. I hope you appreciate just how lucky. I'm sure all of you here today will join me in wishing the bride and bridegroom a life of great happiness together. That they deserve it is beyond question. May their joint efforts yield even more than they achieved singly. And may their happiness be daily enriched with many blessings. Now, ladies and gentlemen, will you please be upstanding and drink with me the toast, the bride and bridegroom. The bride and groom, Jean and Joe. Jean and Joe. Hey! Couple more telegrams here now, mate. You read the bunch. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if, if I could have your attention again, please. There are uh, another two congratulatory telegrams. Uh, they're from Malaya. The first reads, 
We always knew he would make you an honest woman. <laughs> Best wishes and love to you both, Sally and Derek. And the second, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Rene Frith. It's nearly three months since I've been able to get out to the office or the club. Lester's wife, Eve, has been organizing me. It was she who insisted I should engage a nurse to sleep in the flat. I've spent the winter writing down this story. I suppose because an old man loves to dwell on the past, and this is my own foible. And having finished it, it seems to me that I've been mixed up in things far greater than I realized at the time. I suppose it's because I've lived rather a restricted life myself that I've found so much enjoyment in remembering what I've learned in these last years about brave people and strange scenes. I've sat here day after day this winter, sleeping a good deal in my chair hardly knowing if I was in London or the Gulf country, dreaming of the blazing sunshine, of poddy dodging and black stockmen, of cairns and of the great barrier reef, and of a girl I met twenty years too late, and of her life in that small town I shall never see again that holds so much of my affection. <laughs> <laughs> 